with the growing popularity of off-the-road four-wheel drive Class B vans, this week we decided to take a second look at a serious off-the-road motorhome from Overland Cruiser. Later, with more and more folks opting to purchase a used motorhome or trailer, we asked Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 to show us what's involved in remodeling and upgrading a used RV. This week, we bring you part one and two of this five-part series. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. RV adventure comes in all different types of sizes and shapes and intensities. Some people like to take their adventure a little bit farther than others. They go over the hill, they kind of push it to the edge, or for that matter, they push it right off the edge and keep going beyond that. If you're gonna take that kind of an adventure, you need a vehicle that's custom built and specially equipped for that sort of activity. And the new Earth Cruiser four-wheel drive uh, adventure vehicle is just one such vehicle. The Earth Cruiser is a unique breed of vehicle designed and built specifically for long distance, long term, self contained overland travel and expeditions. Although technically a motorhome, it's as far from the average RV as a vehicle can be. Its design originated at the company's Australian factory, but is now also manufactured at its Bend, Oregon facility. That's where we spent some time and caught up with company owner and vehicle designer Lance Gillis. His worldwide travels and other vehicles provided the inspiration for the Earth Cruiser. We started Earth Cruiser in Australia and the reason behind it, my wife and I just love to travel. We have been fortunate to go and see some great places and you want to sometimes go back and you want to do that in a little bit more comfort and style. There was nothing, nothing out there to buy, and my, my uh, background and experience is in specialty vehicle building. That's what I do. And really, that's where Earth Cruiser came from, and so we started the company in Australia. Australia has very strict rules when it comes to what's called second stage manufacturing. You can't just build one of these in Australia. It has to be tested, has to be proven to the most minute detail and the modifications we make to the vehicle. So we have a, um, a legitimate product. Earth Cruisers are registered as Earth Cruisers, not a Fuso truck. They are a vehicle in their own right in Australia. It became apparent that there was an opportunity, opportunity for us to build Earth Cruisers in the United States approximately four years ago. We uh, registered the company here and just a little over three years ago, we started to manufacture them in the United States. So right now we have um, 17 people um, in our fabulous workshop here in Bend and I've got to tell you the, um, the quality of work that these guys and girls put out is absolutely phenomenal. It is a great pleasure of mine to go to work every single day. When you need to travel some seriously bad roads you need a four-wheel drive and the Fuso chassis does the job. This rig has driving capabilities well beyond those of most any conventional RV. Our video shoot didn't include any genuinely gnarly terrain, but we caught some of the flavor. There's no need to shy away from that truly memorable campsite due to bad roads. The base vehicle for us uh, in the United States is the Fuso factory four-wheel drive system. So six-speed auto, diesel engines, very economical. Uh, they're a commercial base vehicle which we like, makes sense for us because we want them to be re, uh, robust, we want them to be relatively simple in this modern world for, for maintenance. I mean, that's a bit of an oxymoron, I know that. But our, uh, our intention is for the, the base chassis to be as, um, uh, as robust as possible. So what we have here is the, uh, the Fuso, which is parent company is Mercedes-Benz. A look at the beefy transmission and transfer case revealed the heavy-duty overkill nature of the powertrain. A custom roll cage protects the cab from tree branches and other hazards. A 16,000 pound winch up front is matched by one out back because you want to be able to back out of trouble as easily as you got into it. 
Tow hooks and other recovery hardware are standard. Sand mats and recovery tools are conveniently located on the rear bumper. Tucked away in its own corner storage bay is an electric air pump for inflating the tires after a low tire pressure run through the sand or after a flat repair. Fuel economy for us on this particular one has been between 15 and 17, which is kind of average again with the newer vehicles as well. Uh, you are not going to enjoy the huge horsepower of you know a great big seven litre diesel whatever, but interestingly just go and have a look at the torque curve between those larger V8 diesels and some very fuel efficient um, four cylinder diesels. You might be surprised. We'll be back to continue our look at the Earth Cruiser Expedition Vehicle right after these commercial messages. Aquacam Possums, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Two great contests, two great prizes. First, we're giving away a 130-watt GoPower portable solar panel kit, along with a 700-watt inverter and a 30-foot extension cord. Plus, we're also giving away a super comfortable RecPro wall hugger recliner from their famous Charles Collection in your choice of colors. For additional information on the contest and how to enter, visit our website at rollingontv.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Serious expedition travel calls for a specially built vehicle and the Earth Cruiser is the right rig for the job. Let's continue our look at this exciting custom built adventure vehicle and super heavy duty RV. The body is double wall molded fiberglass with a structural foam laminate to provide strength and insulation. Our limit for the size of an Earth Cruiser was to making sure it fit inside a shipping container. So that was a, a, you know, the first critical thing to talk about. And so with those dimensions sorted out, the next thing we want to do is keep the profile of the vehicle, uh, of the cab itself. As a, as a driver, you know, fatigue is the, is the biggest killer. And if we can make it that the driver is more comfortable and has less things to worry about and, and, and two can enjoy the view and, and two can enjoy the experience, that counts. You'll notice that the Earth Cruiser uh, cabin f is the same profile as the cab. The angle is almost identical. So when you're driving through those trees and, you're, you're, and you want to duck into McDonald's or Starbucks to grab a coffee, if the cab fits widthwise, you fit. And with the raised roof model, the, ca the, the, the roof of the camper is identical to the roof of the cab. And so you have, it's just more comfortable for the driver. The Earth Cruiser chassis is impressive, but its interior and accommodation features add up to enhance comfortable, long distance, self-contained living. This particular vehicle, um, the, the floor plan in the system is based around comfortable travel for two people. I, I want to get across the point that this vehicle has just come back from Malaysia and that's why the raised roof, that's why you can see there's so much light that comes in here because we are looking for a vehicle that gives us the opportunity to enjoy the outside. The floor plan, the, the way everything works, uh, the systems, everything is based around one simple premise and the premise is that we want to get out and enjoy the world as much as we possibly can because what matters to us is that we want to be able to maintain the vehicle quickly, simply um, as, as possible and get on with what we really want to do. Uh, the bed is up the back um, and it's just a little under a queen size for the bed. Tons of storage underneath the bed. With the roof down you can still comfortably sleep and this is important because some people like to stealth camp 
some people if the weather um, for whatever reason that makes sense so from when the roof is down it's 24 inches from the top of the mattress to the bottom of the bottom of the bed and that would be very familiar for a lot of people with truck campers uh, drawer storage is the most efficient cupboard storage we find inefficient this is an off-road vehicle so we pay a lot of attention to making sure the drawers shut and stay shut you'll notice no, there are no drawers forward facing where they could open and then become uh, a, a hazard when you're off-roading those sort of things matter to us the forward dinette we have the heating system underneath one seat. We have a laundry under the other for just to, to dry your clothes out as, you, as you're traveling. Kitchen bench is, um, again, it's fiberglass. It's uh, with, the, with the hard surface, easy clean. You'll see there's no sharp edges, rubbish bin in behind it, twin sinks, silly things, but we think they matter. Twin sinks with the plugs at opposite ends. So if you are a little bit out of kilter, it still drains. Uh, purified drinking water, not just filtered but is purified so we can pick up water from anywhere, critical for what we do. The refrigerator we use is marine fridge, stainless steel. It has some inherent features that work for us, being a, a marine style compressor fridge. So again it's 12 volt. Most importantly for us it'll work at a level, at, out of level, at a very low current draw. Overhead, there's a microwave oven attached to the ceiling, and like other 120 volt appliances, it's powered by the inverter. A central system panel contains most of the vehicle's electrical circuit and appliance controls, and monitors for the furnace, solar charger, and so on. Dometic European style windows include vertically deployed shades and window screens, and the windows hinge at the top to avoid water intrusion and bad weather. What we also have is access through to the cab, and so what you can do with an earth cruiser, there's a row of switches beside the door, you can close the roof, pull the awning in, the catch on the outside of the door is internal, well kind of internal, so you can grab the door and close it, so you don't have to exit the vehicle to leave. This matters because the security aspect is enormous. We can easily jump through if we want to, start the truck and be on our way. It doesn't matter if it's crocodiles, kangaroos and mosquitoes out there that you don't want to don't want to have to deal with. Everything can be closed up and gone in about 27 seconds and you're out of here. And that's why we have access to the cab. It's critical. The Earth Cruiser is not for everyone. It's a comfortable but serious vehicle with every feature chosen for its intended use, which is long-term adventure travel with no restrictions on getting there. To learn more about the Earth Cruiser, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Hi and welcome to our RV interior upgrade project. The RV getting the upgrade is our fifth wheel destination camper at the beach. When we were looking for an RV to put on our lot, we didn't want a brand new one for obvious reasons. What we found was an older fifth wheel that was in excellent condition for its age. After situating the fifth wheel on our lot, we added a 10 by 20 four season patio enclosure to expand our interior living space. Dawn quickly got busy furnishing and decorating the patio enclosure to give it that beachy look and feel. The problem was the interior of the fifth wheel was showing its age. The carpet was old and worn, the window shades were outdated, and the furniture looked the way you would expect old furniture in an RV to look. Our plan is to upgrade the RV interior with a modern day look and feel. The way we're going to do that is by installing some new MCD American Duo Day Night Roller Shades, new Infinity Luxury Woven Vinyl Flooring, and new Rec Pro Furniture. But before we can do any of that, we need to remove all the old furniture, flooring, and shades. That's our plan for today.
The first step of the interior upgrade project was to remove the old furniture and the dinette booth. That will give us better access to remove and replace the old flooring and shades and eventually install the new products. When you remove RV furniture, start by removing all of the cushions to see how the furniture is secured to the walls and floor. Using the correct tool, start removing all of the screws and other mounting hardware. Screws typically used in RV construction are either combination screws like this square and Phillips head screw, or just a square head screw like this. Square or Robinson bits come in three sizes, so make sure you use the correct size bit to prevent stripping the screw head or the driver bit. We started by removing the dinette table for better access to the dinette booths. Some booths can be removed without taking bottom drawers out. If not, you can remove the drawers by releasing the clip on the drawer guide. Next, we removed all the screws securing the booth to the wall and floor. Then we removed the dinette booth. Roxy was concerned about what was happening to her favorite bed under the dinette table. With the dinette removed, we can start on a sofa. This is a hide-a-bed, so you need to position it where you have access to the mounting hardware. Next, I remove the bottom skirt panel for better access under the sofa. Remove all the bolts and mounting hardware securing the sofa to the floor. To make it easier to get the sofa through the entry door, I remove the bolts securing the back of the sofa to the frame. Now we can remove the sofa. The recliner is freestanding without any mounting screws, so it was easy to move out of the room. With all of the furniture removed, we can start removing the old flooring. Our plan is to use the old flooring material as a basic template to cut the new flooring, so we need to be careful taking it out. Let's see what's involved with removing the old flooring. Tools that are helpful include a razor knife, a staple puller, and a pair of pliers. When you remove carpet, there are tack strips securing it to the floor and lots of staples. After a piece of carpet is loosened, you can pull it away from the floor one section at a time. I plan to use the carpet from the steps as a template too, so I was careful removing it. It might appear that carpet goes under base cabinets, but if you remove the bottom trim piece, there is a good chance the carpet does not go under the cabinet. We decided to replace the old wood flooring too, so we removed it. I mentioned I am using the old carpet as a template, but for areas of the room where there wasn't any carpet, I need to make a template of that space. I used an old roll of laminate floor underlayment to make the templates, and I made some notes so we would remember where it goes when we prepare to cut the new flooring. With everything removed from the floor of the RV, we can prep the floor for our new flooring. First, we need to remove all of the staples from the floor. Let's see how that goes. Preparing the floor surface for installation. You can use a staple remover or a pair of pliers. Be careful working on your hands and knees. The staples are very sharp. The floor must be smooth, clean, flat, and dry with no dirt, dust, wax, glossy paint, or any foreign materials. Fill in any cracks, knots, or other uneven surface areas using a latex fortified product. After it dries, sand any uneven surfaces smooth. Glossy or metallic surfaces need to be sanded to a dull surface. The last step in the preparation is to clean the floor surface thoroughly. The wood must be cleaned for the new flooring to properly adhere to the floor. It was a messy job, but now we can start on the fun stuff, installing the new interior products. Join us in the next episode of the RV Interior Project when we install new MCD American Duo roller shades in the fifth wheel trailer.
Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Welcome back to the RV interior upgrade project. So far, we've removed all the old furniture and the old flooring. Today, our plan is to remove the old curtains, mismatched blinds, and the pleated shades in preparation for installing the new MCD American Duo Day-Night Roller Shades. With this installation, we are keeping the original balances, but removing the rest of the window treatments. The first thing we need to do is remove the old curtains and rods. There is not much space between the wall and the balance, but if you reach up and raise the curtain rod at both ends, the rod will come off. Next, we remove the old shades from the five windows we are installing the new MCD shades on. The shades are secured using clips, so all I need to do is put a screwdriver behind the shade where the clips are located, and it pops right off of the clip. With the shades removed, now you can remove the screws from the shade tensioners and remove any remaining hardware. The MCD roller shades are custom made for your RV. After following the measuring instructions, your custom made MCD shades arrive in no time. We selected the American Duo Day Night Roller Shades. The MCD Day Shades offer excellent outward visibility and daytime privacy, and all nighttime shades are comprised of 100% privacy and blackout shade materials. The shades are available in a variety of styles and colors to complement the interior design. Let's start installing some MCD roller shades right now. MCD Roller Shade Installation MCD Innovations, a division of Ericsell, is the world's largest manufacturer of RV window shades. MCD offers a good selection of day solar screen material and night vinyl or decorator fabric. To complement our new flooring and furniture, we selected the Coffee Solar Screen Day Shade and the Country Stone Night Shade. Start the installation by mounting the clips to the top of the valance. For best results, the shade should be located as close to the glass as possible, typically 3 8 of an inch away from the window frame. But do not mount it so close that the shade can get caught on anything when it's lowered. The outermost clips should be mounted within two inches from the end of the shade assembly. Mounting clip tabs should be located towards the inside of the coach. Installation screws are not provided due to the variations in requirements. MCD recommends using number eight pan head sheet metal screws. The most common length is one inch, but may vary due to the needs of your particular installation. Center the shade assembly, check for proper orientation, and attach it to the mounting clips. The shade assembly is mounted to the clips by placing the outside edge of the assembly rail into the clips and rotating the shade towards the clip tabs to firmly and solidly snap the mounting rail into place. In most American Duo installations, the clear view solar screen should be located closest to the glass. The night material should be closest to the inside of the coach. Installation tips for proper operation of the shades. The shade must be level. Solid spacers of the appropriate thickness placed under the mounting clips may be necessary. The shade may not bind to anything throughout its entire range of travel. Proper operation requires clearance around all sides of the shade in the upper position. The shade assembly should be evenly spaced left to right and or mounted so that it covers as much of the glass as possible when lowered. Repeat the same process on the remaining windows. The MCD American Duo Roller Shades were the perfect addition to our RV interior upgrade project. Now heat and UV rays from the sun is reduced. We have daytime privacy and nighttime privacy, but we can still see out. And look how easy they operate. For more information on the American Duo Roller Shades, visit mcdinnovations.com. With one-fourth of our RV interior makeover completed, join us next time when we install whitewash wood planks on two accent walls in the RV. And remember, when you want to learn more about using and maintaining your RV, visit rveducation101.com. Happy camping! We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. As usual, this has been another fun production.